So, John, with paperwork with sheep inspections, I mean, what's it involve? Well, having established that the farmer had sheep in the previous two years, we'll request his register and dispatch dockets. Um, we will have a cross compliance report with us, which will uh, give us the numbers basically uh, that the farmer has returned on his census details for the pre uh, previous three years. Okay, so that's just every, that's just not just last year's, but previous years. No, the, uh, back to 2007, we'll be checking. Yeah. Um, we'll check basically to see the the farmer has recorded the number he's he returned in in the flock register. That's in the, in the register yeah. here. And that it matches the number we have on the CCR. Yeah. Um, failure to return the census can lead to a, lead to a penalty on a sheep inspection. That's an important one, yeah. Okay. Then we'll take a sample of the dispatch dockets uh, for the previous three years and we'll just uh, do a check on, on a number of dockets to see that they're recorded in the flock register. Yeah, yeah. For example there, we just go to, uh, say, docket number 81 there on the 15th of the 12th, 09. We'll just check to see that, that that's yeah, in, yeah. in the corresponding and the date corresponds in the flock register. Yeah. Okay. Then after that we may just may take a couple of uh, random dispatch docket numbers from the register, maybe for sheep that were purchased, and see that the farmer has kept a copy of the dispatch docket for that purchase. So basically you're checking what sheep went out, what sheep came in, and are they recorded? That's right. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that'll be the initial uh, office check carried out. After that then we, we, we proceed to the farm and uh, do a full count of all the sheep and check that they're tagged correctly. The farmer will have generally have a, 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 a maybe 10% of the herd um, penned, so we can actually record. We write down maybe two samples of, of ear tag numbers, up to a maximum of eight in each sample. And when we go back in, then we'll check to see if the farmer has those numbers recorded in the flock register. So by and large, I mean, for a typical flock of 100, 100 yos, how long would the um, inspection take? Well, it may take... Um, an hour to do the paperwork inside checking checking dockets and register and uh, reconciling uh, numbers and it may take an hour outside on the ground or maybe longer depending on how, if the sheep are in, in two or three different locations to, to count the sheep and check that they're all tagged and record the sample numbers. Would you be checking for new electronic tagging? Well not just yet but um, basically any sheep born in 2010 that is, is going to be kept on for breeding will have to be electronically tagged. Um, at 12 months of age, so basically from January 2011, um, sheep destined for breeding will, will have to have the new electronic tags inserted. I mean, the grassland sheep scheme is new this year. I mean, what do you have to do for that? Yeah. Well, basically, farmers will be receiving a payment under the grassland sheep scheme this year based on the number of breeding stock they declared on their census return in 2009. We'll basically be doing a reconciliation at the time of the inspection to verify that the farmer declared the correct number of breeding stock. Basically, we'll be checking um, dispatch dockets for breeding stock that were purchased or sold since the date of the census, which will be in December 2009, just to verify that, and in correlation with the number of breeding stock we've counted on the holding, we'll be verifying, basically, that the farmer had the number of breeding stock he declared in 2009. And if you can't reconcile it? Then the farmer will get penalties under the grassland sheep scheme, okay. if there was a shortfall of, of, on the number declared. If he wasn't above a certain number? That's right. So in a sheep farm, would you look to where the sheep are being dipped? Yeah, generally if a farmer is using a sheep dip, we'll, uh, we'll inspect the uh, dipping facilities. This would be generally part of a groundwater inspection, which is to do with risks of uh, pollution to groundwater. We'll check the facilities to see that they're structurally sound, to see that there's no risk of escape of uh, dip to, to groundwater. We'll be looking to see if there's a bung in the bottom of the tank that the farmer might be letting it off directly to, to a drain. Um, we'll also be keeping an eye on the, the drain back facilities that, that any, any dip lost after the sheep are dipped will drain back into the tank. And so what else do you look for in groundwater? Well, we'll be looking at um, diesel tanks to see that there's good management uh, of, the, of the diesel, basically that a lot of diesel has not been spilled while, while filling tractors or filling drums to, to fill tractors. Um, we'll also be keeping an eye out that there's no batteries um, carelessly left around the farm, that there might be a risk, uh, could be a hazard to livestock as well as to, to groundwater, battery acid. Yeah. Um, we'll also be looking if there's fertiliser stored to make sure that it, it, it's um, well packaged and that there's no risk of uh, fertiliser leaching away and getting into groundwater. So what do you check I mean, here with fertiliser here? Well, with fertiliser, if it's out in the open, we'll just be checking that the packaging is intact, you know, that there's no risk of uh, fertiliser spilling and mixing with rain, rainwater and leaching away to groundwaters. So you have here, I mean, there is a rip, so is that a problem? Well, that's a problem. Uh, yeah, basically, that should be, should be stored in a shed, basically, to avoid any risk of, of fertiliser spilling and washing away into groundwater.
And um, we'll also be maybe checking that the farmer has a storage facility, be it a barrel or something similar for waste oil uh, for tractors.